Adobe Flash. This glorious and admittedly often terrible looking medium was the backbone of the internet in the 2000s. And in early 2021, it was nuked from the internet, never to be seen again. Or at least, that's the impression that some people have. It seems that some of my audience thinks that I'm some kind of internet wizard for being able to find these games that aren't easily accessible anymore, but in reality, I just know a couple simple tricks to help me circumvent the barriers created at Flash's end of life. Flash never really went anywhere. Modern websites have largely replaced it, and it's much more difficult to run than it used to be. However, just because something is harder to access doesn't mean that it's gone. Today, I would like to provide you with three easy options to play Flash games again. This will be kind of a half tutorial, half web game retrospective, and so if you're really only here for the instructions, I would recommend looking at the timestamps, and if you only want the instructions and nothing else, I've written up a concise guide with a link in the description. Before we start, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, MD Hair. Hair loss. It can happen to everyone, including me! Yeah, a few months ago, my hair just started falling out like crazy. And then I started getting stressed about my hair falling out, which in turn led to even more hair falling out. And like an angel from the heavens, MD Hair reached out to me and asked me to try their products. My kit came with a shampoo and conditioner, a scalp serum, a dietary supplement, and a collagen drink mix. MD Hair is all about reversing and preventing hair loss and improving the health of your hair. With MD Hair, you can customize your treatment program with a quiz that'll ask you about some health factors like diet, stress level, genetic predisposition, and so on, and then snap a photo of your scalp to have MD Hair analyze your current level of hair loss. Then you'll be provided with a list of products that are best tailored for your needs. The hair products have a really fresh and invigorating herbal scent and are free of sulfates and parabens. My hair looks and feels really great after using these, and people have even mentioned to me that my hair looks shinier and healthier than it did before and I especially love how my hair looks after applying the serum. Whether you're dealing with hair loss, damage, or you just like to prevent either of those things, MD Hair can help. By using the link in my description and code LeeSpeak70, you can customize your hair regrowth kit and get 70% off your first monthly delivery of MD Hair. Now, let's get on to the Flash games. Before I proceed, I need to give a disclaimer. Flash was discontinued for a reason. Your personal data can be stolen through Flash files. Flash was subject to a number of catastrophic security breaches while it was still active, and years later it still carries some risk. The first two are quite secure, but the third has all the risks that using Flash came with back in the day. Let's get started with something nice and easy. Method 1, Ruffle. This method is both the most safe and the most limiting. At present, the biggest problem with Ruffle is that it's not compatible with a lot of ActionScript 3, which is present in a lot of games and interactive web pages made relatively more recently. However, this extension is still really worthwhile, let me show you why. First of all, it's extremely easy to install and use. It comes as both a browser extension and a standalone application. I personally recommend the extension for a more seamless experience. To use the Ruffle extension, you simply open a web page that uses Flash and click the play button after it loads. If it's affected by the action script limitation, you'll see a warning before you begin, and there may be a lot of things missing if you continue to run it anyways. Some action script 3 is supported, so even if you do get the warning, try it out and see if it works. If everything's compatible, it'll load the flash file as though the player was never discontinued. A major benefit of Ruffle is that it's very secure. It's as secure as using a virtual machine. Even if a file is malicious, it won't be able to affect your computer. Another benefit of the Ruffle extension is that it makes it very easy to download the Flash files, or SWFs. Having your own copy of the file instead of relying on it being externally hosted guarantees that you'll have access to the game in the future. You can run downloaded files within the application version of Ruffle. More and more games will become functional with further updates, and it's simply a matter of time before the ActionScript 3 limitation doesn't exist at all. Ruffle is a great quality of life improvement if you're searching through old websites in the Internet Archive. For reasons I can't explain, it doesn't always load up on every page, but this is frequently resolved by choosing a different capture date. In fact, you may have run into Ruffle before without even realizing it. Several sites that have historically relied on Flash have Ruffle built in. For example, if you've visited the Homestar Runner website lately, you may notice that much of the website has been restored to its former glory with use of Ruffle, a great improvement over the embedded YouTube videos which eliminated all of the fun little Easter eggs. But the fact of the matter is, if you only use Ruffle, you're going to run into some frustrating limitations. So let's explore the second option. Method 2, Flash Aggregators like Flashpoint. If Ruffle is starting to get on your nerves, your next best option is to check if the files you're looking for are hosted on the Flashpoint archive, recently renamed from Blue Maximus Flashpoint. 
Flashpoint is one of the strongest contributors to the prevention of lost web media along with the Internet Archive, and it's honestly a must-have for anyone who cares about web games. Flashpoint is a free, downloadable application. Flashpoint Ultimate is the version that downloads the entire game library, and unless you've got hard drive space to burn, this isn't the best option due to being over one and a half terabytes. The vast majority of Flashpoint users use the other download option, Flashpoint Infinity. The Windows download is very straightforward, but it can be a little daunting on Mac because you'll need to input some commands in the terminal. The instructions are very clear though, and you'll be fine so long as you keep the tab open for reference. Flashpoint for Mac is a bit buggy and in my experience requires you to quit and reopen the application pretty frequently. And it also won't run games as reliably as the Windows version. For example, I almost never have any luck running Shockwave on Mac. In comparison, the Windows version is extremely stable. Recently, Flashpoint upgraded to version 12, which comes with some major changes. Most notably, Flashpoint 12 comes with a launcher that allows you to update the software and its components instead of having to uninstall and reinstall the whole thing every time. It also streamlines the curation process, replacing the previous curation app, Flashpoint Core. Once you have it downloaded, it's simply a matter of knowing the right search terms to find what you're looking for. If you're just looking for some fun games to play, there's a bunch of curated game playlists that come baked into the application. The Flashpoint Super Hall of Fame is a good place to start. It contains a ton of classic popular Flash games, as well as some extremely artful, lesser-known titles. There are a few tricks to effectively using Flashpoint Search. Typing in your keywords like you would in Google may not yield satisfactory results. Sometimes a simple search will be enough. For example, if I just search Papas, I get all the Papas x games that they have saved. But look what happens if I just search for Sue. Totally drowned out by games from starsue.com. This just means that the search needs to be more specific. In this case, the correct verbiage would be tag colon Sue, which will bring you a list of all the Avatar Star Sue games. If you're still not finding what you're looking for, you may want to take a look at your content settings. Not Safe for Work content is hidden by default, and there's a few different levels of content censoring. It allows you to block and unblock specific tags as well. This is an archive that preserves web media indiscriminately, so please use discretion when changing these settings. Another plus side of using Flashpoint is that it archives other types of games as well. There's Shockwave, HTML5, Unity, as well as a whole slew of mediums that I've never heard of before. It's a comprehensive web game archival system. Games aren't the only thing to be found there either. There's a large selection of animations as well. Be mindful of the fact that the majority of these animations were created during the peak edgelord phase of the internet. There are some other browsers that you can use besides Flashpoint. The Y8 browser and Numuki are good examples. These are loaded with ads and don't have as expansive a selection as Flashpoint. However, they can be a bit more streamlined and easy to use. Y8 has a general audience selection, and Numuki is more geared towards girly games, notably containing nearly every game from everythinggirl.com. Newgrounds also still exists and still has all of its Flash content, but this requires you to download the Windows-only Newgrounds player. Well, what if you still can't find what you're looking for? Then that means it's time to take on the Untamed Wilds. Method 3, Flash Player. If Ruffle and Flashpoint embody safety over freedom, then this method embodies freedom over safety. I have to emphasize that this is not a safe method and may put your computer at risk for viruses or theft of your sensitive data. Only use this method on sites that you trust and understand that even trustworthy websites can be exploited by bad actors. This method is usually overkill if you just want to play some old Flash games, but if your goal is media preservation, this is a convenient option to have on hand. To make this method more secure, I recommend using a virtual machine, which is an operating system emulated within your computer. You'll need to follow another tutorial to install one of those because I'm woefully unprepared to instruct anybody on that. It's a bit of an involved process to set one up and get it working, and you also kind of need a high-powered computer, so if you choose to forego this step, have an antivirus like Malwarebytes installed and run it periodically. Don't allow Flash Player to run on unknown websites, and a good rule of thumb is to check to see if the file is on Flashpoint before you go looking for it yourself, and try running it with Ruffle before you get out your Flash-enabled browser. I have to thank GaiaOnline.com for this method. Their games page includes links to all the downloads that you'll need. That's awfully bold of them. Instead of just retiring their Flash content, they said F it, left it up, and provided a questionable workaround. Maybe not the most responsible of them, but I do appreciate it nonetheless. Use the link in my description or navigate to the games tag from the homepage or else you may get hit with a login screen. You don't need to have a Guy Online account to access these links. 
you'll find a nice helpful tutorial at the top of the page with the download links directly embedded. Click and download your operating system's version of both Waterfox Classic and Flash Player. This gives you an out-of-date version of both programs that doesn't include the kill switch for Flash that was included in its final update. If you allow either of these programs to update, this method will stop working. After you install both programs, you should be ready to go. Quit and restart the browser if it's not working. You won't be able to install Flash Player on newer systems, including Apple Silicon, so keep that in mind. Use a trusted website to test it out. I'll leave a link in the description for a game that you can use to test both the Ruffle and Flash Player methods. And it's also just fun. If everything is working correctly, you should get a warning on any new website you visit where Flash could be activated. In order to play the Flash content, hit Allow. At this point, Flash should be up and running as though it was never retired. I have to stress again that this is the least secure of the methods that I'm discussing today. One of its biggest practical uses is to get the most out of virtual worlds that still exist, like Gaia Online and Neopets. Now let's actually find some games! Next up, Flash game websites that still exist, and how to find the ones that don't. Let's start with some easy options. Ancon Arcade was my favorite Flash game aggregator as a kid, but it stopped being updated a long time ago. However, it's still left up for posterity, and the lack of newer games makes it a nice time capsule for 2000s to early 2010 Flash games. You won't find any pregnant Elsa here. Some highlights from Ancon include Fancy Pants Adventure, a cute and slick little platformer featuring a stickman with cool hair and some ludicrously fancy pantaloons. How about a classic staple of the ragdoll game genre, Interactive Buddy? You can be as kind or as cruel as you like to this little figure made of spheres. I personally prefer the fire hose because it makes money quickly but doesn't negatively affect its mood. See? It's fine. This is fine. It's fine. Line Rider! Draw some lines, send the little guy down your path, send him to hell. It's great! Sleepy. Click on the cubes in the correct color to make them disappear, but don't disturb them. They're having a snooze. How dare you! Sushi Cat, one of my all-time favorite Flash game series, you just drop this cat down the level and have him collect sushi as he falls. The best part is when he bounces around the level so effectively that he's too large to fall into the point bin at the end. There he goes. The puzzle game section has a lot of offerings frequently found on educational game sites like Sugar Sugar, Red Remover, Doodle God, and Grow Cube. It also contains the uniquely high effort and slick Blue Rabbit's Climate Chaos, a puzzle adventure that's full of well-crafted animation. These one-eared rabbits have such a memorable character design. I only played this game for a bit as a child, but these characters are permanently etched into my memory. Space is key. This is a visually minimal but extremely effective game where you navigate your pixel through the obstacles by pressing space, a bit like a predecessor to Geometry Dash. The later levels get pretty frustrating, but this is offset by the extremely great background music track. The Achievement Unlocked series of games is another all-timer, along with honestly every single game created by JMTBO2. You can identify these games by their use of this cute little elephant. Achievement Unlock 2 is my personal favorite and takes several hours to get all the way through with some really interesting unlockables that are sometimes very difficult to figure out without utilizing that walkthrough button. I really recommend checking out this series of games and if you'd like to support the creator, the elephant collection will soon be available for purchase on Steam. Speaking of Flash games that have since graduated to purchasable Steam titles, how about some Tasty Planet? If you enjoy games of the Katamari Damacy variety, then you'll enjoy this one. Gather items and grow bigger and bigger until you're all-consuming! I'm also very partial to the Duck Life series. Each iteration has slightly more polish and a handful of additional features. My personal favorite is the third one, where you can choose between several different types of Pokemon-like evolutionary lines, including Strong Man Duck, Fast Man Duck, Mermaid Duck, and Bird That Isn't a Duck Duck. And then you train and race them and become Duck Champion. Another site that I highly recommend is Original. These are games created by Fairy Hallam, who you may notice by the art style contributed several games for major brands, especially for American Girl. I can't stress enough that this is one of the best selections of Flash games in the world. The games are so well crafted and avoid much of the usual control jank that Flash tends to suffer from and are just extremely good to look at. I love you, Original. Long live Original! I believe all of these games that I mentioned from both Ancon and Original are available on Flashpoint. But what about the sites that aren't still up and running, or have changed beyond recognition? If you're trying to recover some lost Flash media and are coming up empty-handed, it's time to use the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine. Before I start talking about what you can find on the Wayback Machine, let me make it clear what you can't. If you have grand hopes of reviving a lost virtual world via the Internet Archive, let me skip you straight to the disappointment. 
Online games are almost always off the table unless they've undergone some major retooling to be able to run as a single-player game. While Flash in general is far from gone, there are lots of games, especially multiplayer games, that are in fact fully gone. What did you say? She's gone! There is a chance that you'll be able to pull some assets from what remains on the Internet Archive, but a playable shuttered MMO you will not find. Somehow, some of these multiplayer or login-based games have been converted to a single-player locally hosted format, which is a type of techno wizardry fully beyond me. But be sure to check on Flashpoint to see if what you're looking for is there. For example, the Foster's home game Big Fat Awesome House Party is there and playable, as well as the Horseland MMO. Games locked behind a login have a similar problem. Because these involve backend data that can't be collected by the Internet Archive's crawlers, they're typically not accessible anymore if the website that hosts them is shut down. Every now and again, you'll encounter something that hypothetically should be able to run just fine, but the flash file no longer exists. Unfortunately, when this happens, the only thing you can do is say, God damn it, and move along. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom. There's still plenty of stuff that you can find. Let's use good old Girls Go Games as an example. If you've visited the website lately, you may notice that all of the Flash games are missing from the search results. However, none of them are actually gone, and in fact, all of the files are still actively hosted on the website A Game, at least as of posting this video. To find these games, we'll need to use the Wayback Machine. Navigate to a period of time that you're familiar with and start searching through the categories. Unfortunately, the search functionality doesn't work when you're using the Wayback Machine, so you'll need to find the game that you're looking for manually. If you can't find what you're looking for, try picking a later capture. Sometimes you'll get lucky and the Flash content will just load directly from the page. Other times you'll just wait and wait and nothing will show up. Don't despair yet, the file's just not loading properly. Let's use this fairy dress-up game as an example. I found the page, but the game itself is nowhere to be seen. Right-click and hit the View Page Source option, and then hit Ctrl F to bring up the Find panel and type in SWF. This will take you directly to all the links of the Flash files on the page. Highlight the URL with the game's title and paste it into the Wayback Machine. And there it is! At present, you don't actually need to use the Wayback Machine for any Flash links from A-Game because they're all still active, but this could easily change in the future. There are a lot of seemingly lost things that you can find using this method. For example, the Polly Pocket homepage animation won't load directly from the homepage, but it will load if you go to the URL of the Flash file. Another useful way to find Flash content using the Wayback Machine is to check out the Site Map and URLs tabs. The Site Map provides an interactive graph of all the saved sections of the website, and URLs displays them all in plain text. One of the easiest ways to navigate this is to type in Flash in the search bar of the URLs tab. This will bring up all of the saved Flash media at once. You'll know you're out of luck under two circumstances. The Wayback Machine hits you with a Wayback Machine has not archived that URL message, or if the only captures that exist come after the content has already become defunct. There's one additional note I'd like to make. If you're like me and are interested in seeing all of the art assets and sound effects from a certain game, I really recommend the JPEXS Flash Decompiler. If you have the download option enabled on Ruffle, you'll be presented with the option to download the SWF if you right-click on it. If you download the file and load it up into JPEXS, it'll break apart the game into its component files and allow you to save them individually. This is a really neat tool for media preservation and can yield some fun and unexpected results. And that's about it. I think everybody who cares about web games owes it to themselves to download Ruffle and Flashpoint. Because they really are champions of media preservation, and once that Action Script 3 limitation is overcome, Ruffle will truly be unstoppable. Another reason is that finding and playing these Flash games is a much healthier way to spend your time on the internet than doom-scrolling social media. So please, I implore you, give some of these methods a try, give a bit of your time to appreciate some of these old games which are largely made by independent creators, and make sure that they don't fade into obscurity. What's your favorite Flash game? Did you find anything good using these methods? Let me know with a comment. I'd like to now introduce you to Buster. Buster is a two-month-old kitten and a real sweet little guy. A little over a week ago now, Buster was tossed from a moving car onto a busy road, as me and my partner happened to be walking by, and we had to stop traffic to stop him from being hit. He was pretty sick when we first took him in, and we're going to need to have several more vet appointments to make sure he has all his vaccinations and gets neutered. 
If it's within your means, it would really mean a lot to me if you donated to my GoFundMe, which I'll have linked at the bottom of my description. Do it for Buster. My latest Patreon exclusive video is a Q&A where I answer some questions from you all. If you'd like access to that, as well as my backlog of exclusive videos, you can join my Patreon at the $5 per month tier. Thank you so much to my Ultra VIPs, Khan, Fishcatch, Julia, Ms. Goat, Riley Meyer, and Tara Tara. Also, thank you to new joiner Dr. Dreamerella. And also, thank you to MD Hair for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to use code LEESPEAK70 for 70% off your first box. Let's go to horseland! Yeah, 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 yeah!